Hey there guys, Ian here, and today I'm bringing you quite an exciting tutorial for you. This is actually my first ever 3DS Max tutorial, um, so don't expect it to be good. Um, but what we're going to try and create in this is an animation I created. Um, this is the first ever animation I've actually rendered out. Um, it's using Octane Render, so I'm going to go over that as well. Um, so if you're normally a Cinema 4D user, this might confuse you a lot because different program, different renderer, all very confusing, but trust me, it took me a few days to get used to it and just look at the result. This, I think, this whole animation took 20 minutes, so you can kind of see it there, um, and yeah, let's just set this up. So straight away you're faced with one of the most horrible um, user interfaces ever, but um, Alt W just allows you to go in between these um, more easily. Um, the middle mouse button you can click and drag it around, if you hold down Alt you'll spin around, and that's all the moving you really need. So the first thing we need to do is in our top view, we're just going to create a basic box. So we're just going to uh, drag it out here and then just raise it up a bit. And if we press W on the keyboard, that brings up our position. And if you just right click on the little um, arrows down here, that actually will put it into the center. So here we have, if it doesn't break, Surely not. No. Here we have our basic cube, which is, um, I imagine you've seen stuff like it in the past, and just so I kind of get an idea of where things are, I'm just going to increase the segments so I can get an idea of perspective and positioning. So the next thing we want to do is create a sphere that we're going to kind of blow up so back over here in our standard primitives we're just going to drag a sphere and you just click and drag to create and I'm just going to lower the segments down. So the next thing we actually need to do is keyframe the positioning of our sphere. So I'm going to have it over here and I'm actually going to have it beneath uh, the ground here and I'm just going to turn on auto key and set a key and this is actually where I want it to end on around I want to say 15 frames and with auto key on you don't need to do anything else you can just drag it up here and kind of put it to the side maybe up a bit more and I'm just going to add some random rotation so now we have a super simple animation and I just want to make sure ooh, just want to make sure that we're kind of going in the right direction. So this is good. So we've got a nice kind of diagonal movement down here. And this is actually all we need. Um, this is the main scene. This is all the animation. Uh, you can fine tune this if you want it to come in at more of an angle. And if you want it to all move, you can just turn off auto key and just kind of drag it around. And that will kind of just offset all the keyframes. Um, you don't need to do anything else, that will just change them all until you kind of turn on auto key again. So the next thing we need to do is actually smash the sphere up. So this is using Rayfire, so this is a very kind of plugin intensive tutorial. And if you don't have any of these, then um, yeah, maybe look at getting it, or I'm sorry if you don't have it, but I've just been playing around with it recently. So you can find the Rayfire um, menu under the geometry and ray fire. I'm not sure if I put it there <laughs> um, or it's there normally, but for me it's there anyway. Then we just click on our ray fire tool and click open ray fire. And at this point, I'm definitely going to save it because 3DS hates me. So I'm just going to call this tutorial. That way I can always just come back to it if needed. So the next step is actually to break up our sphere. 
So as you can see, I've put the sphere under the dynamics object and we have the box under the static object. If we go into our fragment section, we're actually going to break this up by something quite low, like 10, because a lot of the uh, destruction will actually be done in the um, collision rather than um, the initial break. So we're just going to click fragment and now we have 10 pieces here and as you can see it goes forwards. Um, I actually mucked up earlier in the tutorial so it's actually baked a few of the keyframes in but I'm just going to hopefully delete these and it will be fine. No. Okay so if you have clicked bake before then um, you might have a few keyframes here, but it shouldn't be an issue as long as yours does go through. In fact, I can probably delete some of them. No. Okay. Um, yeah, if this does happen to you, then don't worry about it. What you need to remember is just before it hits, so um, here, if we go back, you can see at frame 10 it's just above the ground and frame 11 it's below. So we want to start um, the simulation on frame 10, so I put 10 in here. And I'm just going to change um, the gravity down to 0.7 seven and the time scale to 0.6 and this will just kind of slow the animation down a bit and it will be easier to see it. So under here we actually have a tab called interactive demolition options and that's off by default. Um, as I said I did this before and mocked up so these settings are clearly a bit too high for the tutorial. Um, you can use whatever you like but it can really slow down when you've got a lot of objects in the scene. So I'm just going to kind of just increase some of these values and decrease um, others just so we get slightly less fragments because last time I had hundreds. Um, so I'm just going to lower the probability and this might be okay. So let's zoom out so we can see it a bit better and go up here. And when using the interactive uh, demolition, I always use bake rather than preview, um, just so it bakes it all in. And we'll see what we have. And hopefully this is slightly fewer. Yeah, this is playing back a lot quicker. Um, the last one was dawdling through. So here we have a pretty sweet demolition. Um, and for at least for tutorial purposes, this will definitely be fine. So you can see here, it's baked it all in. We have a really nice animation, which you can see when it hits the ground. We only subdivided this by 10 segments, uh, well, fragmented it by 10. But as soon as it hits the ground, look how many we have. And you could go as far as you want for like huge companies and actual destructions. Uh, you might want to break it up like kind of 10, 11 times, but for this, this is fine. So the next step now is simply um, to texture and light the scene. And that will be done in part two, <laughs> um, as I don't want these videos to be too long. So I hope you've liked this tutorial. Um, if you want to learn how to how I textured, lit, and rendered it, that'll be in part two. This was mainly for the actual destruction animation. So, yeah, stay tuned for part two. It'll be out very shortly after this video, and I'll see you next time.